Well, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Let's try it again. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> I'm so happy to see all of you here. Um, this, has, uh, this has been uh, an event that we have been looking forward to for quite some time, and it's, it's so good to see all of you and see your faces uh, during this time. My name is Norman Davis. I'm the Civil Rights Director for the City of Madison, and I want to welcome you to this uh, 2022 City of Madison Black History Month celebration. Uh, I say welcome to uh, all of our distinguished guests, including uh, Madison Mayor Satya Rhodes-Conway, uh, our uh, distinguished guests from the United States Postal Service, uh, and all of you that have chosen to join us today. Uh, my pronouns are he and him, and I just want to uh, express how happy I am uh, to have you join us today for this celebration. Uh, we have some um, unveilings today that we'll be sharing with you. And I'm really glad that the weather has cooperated. Uh, it's given us just a slice of sunshine in the midst of uh, some snow and, and overcast, uh, which I take as uh, gratitude for, uh, for this celebration. And so um, we, we, do, we are streaming this event on uh, the award-winning Madison City Channel. And so feel free to revisit this event uh, after, um, after this occasion uh, and uh, uh, relive the moment. And so um, at this time, I want to bring to the lectern Trina Gladney. Uh, she is a United States Postal Service retail sales associate, and she works at the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Station in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. She will be leading us in Lift Every Voice and Sing, also known as the Black National Anthem. And so at this time, I'll ask if everyone would please rise. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the on till victory is won. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us the Far on the way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path we pray. Lest our feet stray from the places our tribe where we met thee. Lest our hearts draw 
drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee, shadowed beneath thy hand, may we forever stand true to our God, true to our name, till land. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Trina. That was wonderful, wonderful tribute and a wonderful way to kick off this celebration. It is my honor to introduce her honor, uh, Mayor Satya Rhodes Conway, who will bring us remarks from the city of Madison. Thank you, Norm. And thank you, Trina. That was beautiful. Um, I want to thank uh, all of you for joining us today. Um, I want to thank Alder Carter for being here. Uh, thank you, Alder. And uh, I reflect on that song, Lift Every Voice. Lift Every Voice. Lift Every Voice. Black people have a rich oral history and tradition. Uh, and a history of influencing our culture in ways that often aren't recognized. And so I reflect today on how we must lift up the creative genius of black people past and present in our community. The creative genius of storytelling, of writing, of journalism, of poetry, of singing, of music, of dancing, of drawing, of painting, of sculpting. Have you been on State Street? <laughs> Architecture and quilting and fiber arts and cooking and all things creative. Let's lift up that creative genius in our community. The banner that we're unveiling today shortly honors song, it honors black voices, it honors black history. The anthem that we just heard was written by James Weldon Johnson and composed by his brother, J. Rosamond Johnson. And the banner that you'll see shortly includes a line from the anthem. Facing the rising sun, of our new day begun. Let us march on till victory is won. Continuing the theme of celebrating creative genius, the banner was designed by a woman of color, Elena Puente. You just heard an amazing black woman sing the anthem and interpret it for us. And the stamp that we're going to unveil today commemorates more black creative genius, a black sculptor. Uh, it was designed by a black artist. And uh, the art director uh, was also a person of color. So we have on display here today a lot of creative genius that came out of our black community. And that's worth celebrating. And I'm delighted to be a part of that celebration and to host it here in this building and to lend the, um, the weight of the city of Madison to our celebrations collectively of Black History Month uh, here in the Madison community. So thank you all so much for joining us today, for celebrating Black History Month and for celebrating the creative genius of black people past and present in our community. And thank you for interpreting for us today. I appreciate it. Thank you all.
Thank you, Mayor Rose Conway. I wanted to share just a few remarks about the occasion today. This is an important time uh, in our history. And it's important uh, as we consider that the creative genius, that we also think about collaboration. This is an important time for us to collaborate and look toward the future. This event, uh, not, not only to mention the banner, uh, but also the uh, recognition of the Black History Stamp, is the collaboration of three government agencies, city, county, and federal, collaborating to celebrate black history. We are ushering in a new era of government that is looking at our own practices through an equity lens, learning from the past, learning how we can create that uh, future that is sustainable, that is equitable, and that is going to be good for generations to come. As the song uh, reminded us, facing, we're facing the past, but it also, it means that we're going to do better and that we're going to learn from the past. We want to make sure that the history, as painful as it was, is not subverted. Celebrating black history is a year-long endeavor, and for many of us, a lifelong endeavor. So embracing a future that accepts the past and works to make change, a future where all voices are heard and all share in the good things that the city, the county, and the country have to offer. At this time, I want to um, have the unveiling for the Black History Month banner. Now, uh, the, uh, the city and county had collaborated. Uh, we, we had a banner uh, that's been in, in existence for some time. But we thought that, that now was a good time to mark this new era. Now was a good time for us to create a new banner for Black History Month. And uh, I must acknowledge our friends at the County Office of Equity and Inclusion uh, and uh, the County Executive's Office where we collaborated to create uh, uh, the opportunity for this, this banner. After the banner is unveiled, I want to bring forward uh, Alina Puente, the artist uh, who designed the banner. And, offer her the opportunity to give remarks on her inspiration for the design. She is a blogger, a mom, and a graphic designer. At this time, we'll have the banner unveiling. Ms. Puente. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Alina Puente Obi. I first want to take some time to thank Theola Carter, Carrie Braxton, and Donna Collingwood for reaching out to me and being such an integral part of this specific project. It's truly an honor to have designed this piece. The design for the banner is inspired by an art series that I created two years ago that focuses on the beauty of black hair. It's called Pelo Bueno, Pelo Malo, Good Hair, Bad Hair. The series challenges a misconception of black hair not being perceived as beautiful and celebrates each coil, each curl, and it, each strand. And what a better way to honor it all than with a black national anthem. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory won. Thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> and thank you for sharing your creative uh, inspiration with us. It will be here for us for years and years to treasure and to remember uh, during Black History Month. All right, at this time, I want to bring forward Fabu. 
Fabu is the former poet laureate for the city of Madison. Uh, she will offer to us spoken word on black creativity. Fabu Phyllis Carter, professionally known as Fabu, began writing at the age of 11 and has continued to create poetry throughout her adult life. She was appointed as Madison's Poet Laureate in 2008 and served in that position until 2011. Fabu is the author of four books and an active public lecturer, workshop leader, poetry columnist, and storyteller. She is also a founding member of the Hibiscus Collective, a group of Madison women writers from multiple cultures. Fabu holds a double master's degree from UW-Madison and a PhD in African Studies from the University of Nairobi, Kenya. Fabu. Creative geniuses, Edmonia Lewis and James Weldon Johnson, a commissioned poem by Fabu. There is creation, a blazing fire, bright as high noon sun in the African spirit, wildfire in the African and native. We are the sun-kissed people, gifted in mind, body, and spirit. Surviving 300 years of slavery, 100 years of segregation and reservation, the dread Middle Passage, native land displacements, lynchings, massacres, and smallpox blankets dampened but did not destroy creativity. Edmonia Lewis sculptures represented her through figures for the world to see, black father and her native mother. Facing the rising sun, we create more. Our voices write songs, our hands sculpt marble. Let us march on until victory is won. James Weldon Johnson wrote in Lift Every Voice, our anthem. Celebrating Black History Month 2022, creativity roaring inside dark skins. The stench of slavery and segregation washed away. Our passion for freedom and life creates us again and again and again. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for color coordinating with our banner as well. <laughs> Your outfit is lovely. And at this time, I want to introduce Mr. Eric Henry from the United States Postal Service. Eric Henry has 33 years of working for the United States Postal Service. He has held numerous executive and management positions, including district manager, <clears throat> postmaster, and acting manager of city delivery. He has experience in delivery and retail operations, mail processing, and customer service. In his role as central area vice president, retail and delivery operations, Eric is responsible for improving the customer experience by optimizing precision delivery with the use of technology and analytics, and by investing in United States Postal Service employees to drive an engaged workforce. Eric attended Northwest Missouri State University. He is a graduate of the United States Postal Service Advanced Leadership Program and is a Lean Six Sigma Green Belt certified. Thank you, Mr. Henry. All right, good afternoon, everyone. All right, great to see everyone here today on a nice, bright, sunshiny day. And thank you, Mr. Davis, for that uh, great and kind introduction. I am so happy to be here on behalf of the United States Postal Service as we present the 45th Black Heritage 
forever step, forever stamp honoring Ed Monia Lewis. I'd also like to first acknowledge and thank all of our speakers, all of our honored guests, and community leaders for joining us today. I want to recognize uh, Madison Mayor Sacha Rhodes Conway, Madison Department of Civil Rights Director Norman Davis, uh, Wisconsin District Manager Sam Reed, and Madison Postmaster Diana Nygaard. And I would be remiss if I didn't thank Miss Trina for that great rendition of Lift Every Voice and Sing. I say it this way. If I could sing, I'd like to sing just like that. <laughs> and I also want to say to Miss Alina, what a great, uh, what great artistry. If I could do art, if I could do artistry, I'd do it just like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then the poetry uh, by Miss Fabu. I would say that is fabulous, <laughs> a fabulous. And if I could do poetry and write poetry, I'd write it just like that. So just, just awesome job to everyone. But now while we're here today, uh, Miss Edmonia Lewis was celebrated during her lifetime. But I think it's probably fair to say that most Americans today probably do not know the name of this brilliant 19th century sculptor. We hope today that that will change. One of the most important goals of our stamp program is to raise awareness and celebrate the people, places, and things that represent the very best of our nation, which is the very best of us. And that's why I'm proud of the Postal Service's annual Black Heritage Stamp, which shines a spotlight on distinguished African Americans in our educational, scientific, and artistic contributions to the nation. Miss Lewis had, a, had to overcome many difficult challenges due to widespread prejudice and discrimination based on her gender, race, and class. We know Miss Lewis was born in the early 1840s. Her mother belonged to a Native American tribe in upstate New York and it's believed that her father was from Haiti. She was orphaned at a young age and raised by members of her mother's family and tribe near Niagara Falls, New York. Her half-brother Samuel appears to have funded her, his sister's education, which at the time was doubly unusual for neither women nor persons of color often had such an opportunity at that time. She attended New York Central College, a Baptist abolitionist school, followed by studies at Oberlin College in Ohio. By age 20, she was sculpting in clay, plaster, and marble, and creating medallion portraits and busts of Abraham Lincoln, abolitionist John Brown, and Robert Gould Shaw the Union Army officer who led one of the first African-American regiments during the Civil War. Sales of her works earned enough by 1866 to finance her move to Rome, where she opened her own studio. As she would later explain in the New York Times, I was practically driven to Rome in order to obtain the opportunities for art culture and to find a social atmosphere where I was not constantly reminded of my color. Lewis was among the first black sculptures to achieve widespread acclaim. Even so, she remained frustrated by the intense focus on her race. She famously said, some praise me because I'm a colored girl and I don't want that kind of praise. I, had, I would rather you point out my defects, for that would teach me something. Her pieces would often explore the theme of emancipation and all the hopes and limitation, 
One noteworthy example, Forever Free depicted two figures, a standing man and a kneeling woman celebrating their release from slavery. Other famous works were inspired by poet Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. One example, The Old Arrow Maker, was based on Longfellow's epic poem, Song of Hiawatha. Lewis may have been drawn to the character of Hiawatha because he was from Ojibwa, he was from the Ojibwa tribe like her mother was. Edmonia Lewis enjoyed great success in Rome where her sculptures were selling for thousands of dollars. But it was for the United States Centennial in 1876 that she created her greatest neoclassical masterpiece, The Death of Cleopatra. Made of more than 3,000 pounds of Carrara marble, the realistic depiction of the Egyptian queen at the time of her death was seen as a statement of dignity, power, and resistance. While somewhat controversial at the time, critics also described the death of Cleopatra as the most impressive American sculpture at the centennial. It is on display now for everyone to enjoy at the American Art Museum in Washington, DC. So now, on to the stamp itself. The incredible stamp artwork is a portrait of Edmonia Lewis by New York artist Alex Bostic, based on a photograph by August, Augustus Marshall taken between 1864 and 1871. Because it's a forever stamp, it will always be equal in value to the current first class male one ounce price, which means it will always be a perfect, it will always be perfect for your cards and letters. So buy many, many, many of them. The stamp is also available online at usps.com and at post offices nationwide. And now, on behalf of more than 650,000 men and women of the United States Postal Service, I am pleased to present this year's Black Heritage Stamp honoring Edmonia Lewis. Awesome. Thank you all for being here. I'll turn it back over to Mr. Davis. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Henry, for those inspiring words and the um, education about Edmonia Lewis and um, her work. Looking forward to visiting Washington, D.C. so I can see that sculpture in person. And so I want to um, thank all of you for joining us today as we close. I want to, uh, again, thank Mayor Satya Rhodes Conway. I want to thank uh, Dane County officials, not only the uh, Tamara D. Grigsby Office of Equity and Inclusion and their staff, uh, but also um, uh, Dane County facilities uh, in assisting us in, in getting everything in order today. Uh, greatly appreciate uh, their help. In addition, I want to thank our Department of Civil Rights staff, uh, particularly Michael and Gibson, uh, Donna Collingwood, and Julie Austin uh, for assisting us. I want to extend my gratitude to the United States uh, Postal Service and their staff, uh, their multi-talented staff as well, uh, for lending their talents uh, to us and uh, for sharing the Black Heritage Stamp with us today. I also uh, want to uh, thank City of Madison Engineering uh, for assisting us in um, the, getting the presentation ready for today. And if you happen to visit the downtown during this week, uh, you'll see across the street in the Madison Municipal Building uh, the black solidarity colors of red, black, and green. Uh, that building will be lit up in those colors each night this week. And I uh, certainly uh, want to um, extend my gratitude to uh, Lena Puente, uh, the artist for the banner, lending her, um, her artistry, and also to Fabu 
thank you so much for, for being here today and sharing with us. Um, I want to also extend my appreciation to Madison City Channel uh, for covering this event. Uh, this event is, will be available on the Madison City Channel site uh, for you to review and to uh, cherish uh, as, uh, as the days go by. So thank you to all of you for being here today. Again, I'm Norman Davis. I'm the Madison Civil Rights Director. And I uh, want to just piggyback off of what Mr. Henry said about the sale of the stamp. Not only can you get it online, not only can you get it at the post office, but they have uh, stamps here today for you to purchase. Uh, so please uh, take advantage of this opportunity and um, you can acquire some stamps today. So thank you all very much.